Hey everybody, welcome to the first video from TD Wood Customs. Uh, that's me, Thomas Crick. Uh, this is a video of me building my first walnut conference table. Uh, you're going to witness a lot of mistakes and an awesome table in the end. Stay tuned. So getting right into it, I bought the wood already uh, from a local mill. And just, I bought planks. I didn't buy one big slab. I just bought planks for this table. Um, all of them were over 10 feet. Got the Mafel saw here, which I'll get into more. All right, so see, these are some of the boards that I've already cut. Um, just gonna create a really nice edge. Um, when you do like a plank table like this, like with these long pieces uh, that are somewhat thin, they do tend to like warp a little bit um, before like you join the table. So with the help of a biscuit joiner, a simple like do all one, that'll help me line up uh, all the pieces and then I'll um, work on just leveling it all out. The final dimensions of this table are fo four foot by 10 foot. So I'm doing this, this board here is what? Yeah, basically 11 and a half. Um, so I only need it to be 10 foot, but I'm not cutting it straight to 10 yet. I'm cutting it to 123 inches so that I have some extra room to play with. And once I have it all jointed up, I'll cut fresh sides with the saw. So I'm uh, leaving a couple inches here. Gonna make my first cut at 123. This track, um, I believe is just a little over 124 inches. So um, there's plenty of room to, for that saw to stay on. Okay, so the, the width of all these boards put together, uh, when I bought it, was way over 48 inches, which is what I recommend um, doing because this allows me to take off a good edge on each single, every piece. So you're gonna notice right away, I don't have some big uh, woodworking shop. I have a tiny one stall garage that I can't fit anything in. Um, but I did make one big purchase and that was a Mafel saw. I did tons of research on what I wanted to get. Uh, I ended up going with Mafel over a bunch of different other tool options like a, like a joiner or anything, like a, a planer. I, I got the Mafel saw first because it kind of, in my opinion, um, for like a starting woodworker, it can almost replace a joiner to get nice um, straight edges on these wood planks. And that's exactly what I ended up, it ended up working perfect. Um, I ended up going with the Mafel saw and I've loved it. I'm gonna make a video on the on this saw later on um, because there are a couple things that I didn't couldn't Google uh, to figure out. So I'm gonna kind of fill people in there. So that's another video down the chute. As far as wood goes, um, definitely use kiln dried wood. Basically takes any chance of there being bugs in it. Like bugs will crawl out of your pieces. So definitely get kiln dried. I was lucky enough to have the help of my brother that day. Um, I, this table, which I found out basically the whole couple months I worked on it, it's definitely like on the border of a one-man project. Having him uh, during the cutting and the glue-up stage was was much needed. All right, we have cut all the edges, so it, it's going to join up hopefully really nicely. Um, I am going to use a biscuit joiner to help align the tabletop. A lot of people think that it helps like hold the table together and it gives it more sturdiness, but that's uh, not been proven. It, it doesn't do that. Um, glue enough is basically always going to hold your table together. But I'm going to use it to just help align um, these tops because um, they do they, they are warped a little bit. But I think with the help of that, some clamps, I'll be able to just um, buff it out nicely. All right, so I marked off on the table. It just it doesn't matter really where it's at. Um, I didn't do like anything uniform about it, honestly. But each each uh, piece just needs to be marked with the piece next to it exactly. Um, that way, when we go to join them all up, they just all align perfectly. As you can probably tell, this is a new uh, Dewalt biscuit joiner never used before. Seems uh, easy enough. So here we go. Looking back on it now, the biscuit joiner uh, might have helped uh, with alignment. I think it did, um, but overall it, it didn't offer um, obviously any other support, which I talked about, and um, 
it did kind of create some hecticness when we were gluing it all together because biscuits weren't lining up perfectly, but it ended up working out. All right, guys, it's glue up day, big day, probably the most important day. So first we're gonna hit all the, the edges, the seams uh, that we're gluing up today with tack cloth, kind of get all the dust out of there. And then hell breaks loose, baby. So you can see there, it is a really nice um, edge with that, that Mafel saw. It makes it almost as smooth as a joiner, not quite, but it gets the job done. We're about ready to get started. So we're gonna glue all these tops glue in the in the section with the biscuit and once we have them all all tops glued we'll try to do it really quick shove them all together um, and then we've got like six or seven pipe clamps that will we'll run like every foot and a half and then tons of small clamps that will run at the seams to make um, everything kind of match up so should be good to go all right so for this glue up we're going to use type bond original um, some people might be wondering why I'm not using type bond 3 some people say that type on three doesn't bond super well to walnut for some reason i haven't had any issues in the past um i've only heard that but i don't want to take any chances with this uh table so i'm gonna use type bond original so yeah very nice to have uh, my brother here helping uh it wasn't an a very warm day thank god i, I would have had to wait um because this did take i don't even know um upwards probably close to eight to ten minutes uh maybe not quite that long but um similar but something close to that. Um, so having him uh, being able to toss the glue on while I spread it out and add biscuits was huge. So here we are trying to fit this all together. Overall, it worked really well, um, but it's definitely a two-man job. I would have, uh, if I didn't have him this day, I probably would have failed. It would have dried up on me and I would have had to cut all new edges. So definitely have a, an extra guy there with you. I'm uh, using pipe clamps here in the like looking back on it now I probably needed a couple more but I definitely I, I'm not worried about the tables uh, integrity today so uh, but I don't think you can have too many clamps in the end adding clamping pressure here on the end I should have probably had the wood um, two by fours extend all the way to the end because um, that could have that might have caused a little extra cupping down the road um, but you can see I um, kind of moved the clamps. Um, I put some underneath here because the table it was causing the table to bow a little bit. Um, having all the clamps, having the pipe all on the same side, so I switched that around. Um, make sure the ends are really tight. One other thing that I didn't realize that really kind of hurt me in the end, um, and just actually didn't really hurt me, but just took more time was. I did this on an uneven floor on my driveway. Um, it's got cracks in it, it's not even. So if I go back, I would probably save a lot of headaches if I just went, um, found somewhere level that I was doing this whole process at. Definitely hurt me in the end. Well, that went about how I expected. Just hecticness. But all in all, I think it's uh, good. Got a glue all on all the seams, so it should be a really good fit. Biscuits lined up I'd say pretty pretty well. It's clamp tight. Let's hope that when we take the clamps off in 24, um, it looks okay. But I'm gonna run it through a, a big uh, drum sander that a local hardware store has. Uh, they have a 50 inch and this will be 48. So that should uh, help take out any errors that we make now. When I un unclamped it, I don't know, a day later, uh, maybe a little longer than that, um, I was somewhat pleased with, with how it looked. Uh, there were, there was obviously some twisting and stuff like that that you would imagine um, with a plank table like this. Here's my son jumping on it, look, uh, getting that integrity test. Uh, sent that to the client. Um, definitely hi highly recommend sending videos of your kids jumping on the client's pieces. Here with the fell saw, I'm just, uh, I don't think I'm cutting it down to exact dimensions yet. Uh, just uh, taking off of that hard edge. Here, so some backstory. There was a twist in this table, a, a really, really slight twist. So I took it to a uh, 50-inch drum sander in town. See, see if they could just get out this tiny twist. Typically, 
Um, Sanders don't get twists out. Uh, but I thought it was so minimal and talked to the guys that they thought it might just relieve it. It it did a little bit, but you could still see a tiny twist. Took it to a CNC shop. And as soon as they hooked it up to the vacuum of the table base of the CNC, it just flattened out. The little vacuum pressure literally flattened out the table. So he said, doesn't make any sense to CNC it because he'd be literally just taking off height of the table on a flat table. He wouldn't It wouldn't help the twist. So what he said is, Try to make a skirt with it, which was kind of my idea. Um, I was planning on um, using these C channels, which I'll show down the road. Um, I clamped it down to these uh, steel C channels, which were dead, dead flat. So that basically flattened out the table. Then I um, added the C channels so that the table stayed flat. Flat. And what I later realized that all this headache, it didn't matter because as soon as I had those table legs on there and it was on a level surface, it just it, the table level out fine. So. Definitely know with a plank table like this, uh, you're going to have, like, it, it'll naturally just move and twist and form a little bit. Um, that's just something you got to kind of prepare for. Here I am. I got these uh, table legs off of Etsy. Um, they, they they were good. They're, uh, they're kind of a modern um, A-frame looking leg. Um, I did have some issues with them rusting, and I talked to the, talked to the owners over there, and they... Were, they worked with me really well. They actually uh, helped me fix the issue and then refunded me 50%. So here I am. I'm just using these uh, threaded inserts. Um, definitely get steel. I've had no issue with them coming out on me. So you can see me drilling it in here. I uh, just put a little piece of tape on that drill bit and definitely go the exact size uh, of the threaded insert. It's still very tight. You can see I, I tried using a size smaller. It didn't work. I was also uh, drilling all the holes uh, for the C channels at this point. Here I'm using the Allen to uh, tighten that C channel in. I added a little bit of wood glue um, just to help it slide down in there. At first I added, actually added a little bit too much and it popped down the bottom and it started filling the hole. Um, beginner mistake. So uh, just barely any. You, you probably don't need any at all um, in the first place, but um, I just added a tiny drop to it in it. Here the threaded inserts didn't line up perfectly with the holes in my legs, so I had to drill them out a little bit. I don't, I need to uh, figure out how I kind of mess this up a little bit because I had to drill out a couple, couple different holes. The holes on the legs were really like exactly the size you needed, so that did present a little issue, but I ended up not having any issue lining up with the C channel, so Drilling them out a little bit just gave me a little bit more wiggle room and didn't compromise any integrity of the leg. All right, you see me here putting the C-channel on backwards. That's because I wanted to see if this trick that I was using with the with the clamping the table down to the steel, if it worked uh, giving me a flat table. Um, if I tighten everything down with it clamped to the steel, if it worked. So I didn't want to full send the uh, C-channels in if it wasn't going to work out for me, but... Sure enough, I flipped this table. Um, you'll see me flip this table many, many times. <laughs> it's a, It was a heavy table. It's definitely a workout flipping it by myself, which I was usually the case. Um, and super relieved here um, with the legs on there and everything. It started to take form, and I couldn't believe it. Super happy. All right, here you see me uh, using my Mafel saw again. And this is something that I learned from a YouTuber, Blacktail Studio. Uh, he uses this trick to put a chamfer on his, t uh, the ends of his, the edges of his table. Um, it's a super modern look. I really like it. So I, I copied him on this, um, just, uh, angle the saw. I think it's like 22 degrees, uh, angle. You can do basically whatever you want. Um, and then stick out that Mafel um, track a little bit off the edge of the table in it. Um, I think it was like, I want to say it was three eighths. I might've, uh, had that lip hanging over on the, the track, the guide rail. So here I am doing the end again, match up perfectly. You on me? All right, Nate's here now. So put the crappy camera away. Um, so I got a flat table and that's good. So I'm not gonna add any more C channels, but I'm going to inlay the ones. I had these upside down um, just because I didn't want to inlay them 
if that's not that wasn't their final spot if I had to switch something up. But now that I know they're good to go, I'm going to inlay them. So I've got my router. Um, basically what I'm going to do is, it might look a little confusing right now, but I'm going to cut spacers here um, with, and just, uh, like with the 2x4. Cut the spacer so that when I run the router on that edge, it's going to make a perfect um, quarter inch cut. Um, C channel will just sit down right in it. Now that I know that the table is sitting flat with those C channels, I decided to inlay them uh, just with the router here. Um, just basically making notches for the, the legs of the C channel to uh, sit right in in the table. All right, so the black walnut planks that I got were actually, they're in really good condition, uh, really pleased with them. But they did have some knots and some soft spots that I basically just used my Dremel uh, hand tool and cut out the soft spots uh, so that the epoxy would stick really well. I had this old mattress laying around uh, in, the, in my parents' garage, which is where I'm working at uh, here, and I decided to use it as a place to put the table on. It actually worked out pretty well. Um, so I was going with, uh, I ended up using Total Boat, Total Boat uh, epoxy with some black, black powder dye. Uh, so I just, I'm taping it off, taping off the bottom of the holes with Tyvek tape um, so that the epoxy doesn't leak through and then I'm going to just pour, pour from the top side. Yeah, so I'm using Total Boat Epoxy here. Um, that's just what I've seen other people use. Uh, I actually have switched uh, to uh, Super Clear Liquid Glass Epoxy now. Um, but I wasn't doing like any deep, pour, deep pours with this stuff, uh, which it's not meant to be used for. Um, I was just doing basically little little knots and little pieces here. I had no issue at all with uh, with it cracking or heating up too much. Um, so pretty pretty impressed with the total boat stuff on this project. With the epoxy, you just want to make sure you have it really well mixed. Um, definitely mix it for a couple minutes at least, and uh, make sure that all the black powder on the side is is even. Um, scrape the edges, scrape the bottom, make sure there's no concentrated pigment anywhere. If you use uh, if you use like a liquid dye instead of the powder, I've heard that it can stain the table. Um, so you want to basically shellac it or um, put a coat of epoxy on it so it doesn't actually stain the wood. But with this powder, uh, it doesn't do that. And I found that it didn't stain the walnut at all, even if it had dripped on walnut at different spots that I didn't want it to, I was able just to just sand that right off with no staining. You can probably tell from this point in the video, but um, you'll also see it later on, but I'm definitely uh, on the beginner side of, of woodworking. I've only been doing it for, I don't know, five to seven years. Uh, this is actually my first time using epoxy. Um, so I definitely learned some things, but overall, I was I was pretty happy with how it went. Um, I decided to use black because I think it looks good on black walnut, and also because uh, I get away with more mistakes than using clear. Definitely just tried to um, pour it in uh, slowly here. I've since then bought in, um, like little syringes that make my life easier, uh, and I don't have to um, just try to pour it out of this this big cup here, which kind of made it come out fast so if you're thinking you're just gonna mix your epoxy and pour it and leave I uh, definitely don't recommend doing that uh, the epoxy 
it, it tends to just find those little cracks in, in different voids and either it'll leak out on you or it can um, just uh, shrink down into the hole and then you have you need to top off the hole a little bit. So, and obviously use my blowtorch here to just uh, pop the bubbles. Here I'm just uh, removing the Tyvek tape, seeing uh, how it looks on this end. No leaks, uh, which was lucky um, for my first epoxy pour. Then I just flipped over the table and I'm gonna do the other side. Uh, this total boat epoxy was actually, uh, it was pretty fat, pretty quick dryer, uh, just a couple hours. And because they're small little holes too, they, they dried pretty quickly. I think I gave each one at least 24 hours to dry before I flipped it over and messed with the other side. So, all right. So here is a bow tie on the bottom side of the table. There was a, there was a little crack here that I figured I would um, add some character to the table and also add some structural integrity there with the bow tie. Um, definitely not a bow tie expert. I don't have a bandsaw, so my bow ties aren't perfect. Uh, I should probably just buy some off of Amazon, like pre-cut, so it's a little more accurate. Um, but, you know, all in all, um, I, I just route it out. Um, I first make my bow tie, uh, mark it with a marking knife on the edges, route it out, and then take my chisel and clean up the edges. Uh, definitely take your time here. You want sharp chisels. Um, that's the most important thing. I usually don't listen to my own rules, though, and uh, if I use dull chisels, my bow tie is definitely not as, as nice. Just using the sander here on the last uh, bit to bring that bow tie down all in all not too shabby for a first time bow tie here i am flipping it that was my method did it probably like 20 30 times never fell almost did once here i am topping off some holes that uh shrunk on me which is what epoxy tends to do um so adding some more extra black epoxy and then i'm also using ca glue um to uh fill tiny little voids uh, little holes on the on the table that maybe uh, are from bugs or anything like that so doing another bow tie on the top of the table uh, this was actually my favorite uh, part of the table it was a really cool plank about in the middle of it had some cool swirl in it and I put this bow tie right in the middle of the knot and it, it was a really cool look you can see after I hammered in the bow tie I um, got some sawdust from the little sander dust collector on my on my just cheap Dualt sander and put that around the edges that basically um, hides any seam or any opening on the around the edge of the bow tie. Here, if you've watched any uh, other YouTube videos uh, like making tables, you'll see this trick here. I'm just lightly putting some pencil mark marks on the table and that will basically help guide my sanding. Um, I spent days sanding, uh, it took forever. You can see I, I routed around the edges, just an eighth inch router uh, round over bit on the edges gives it a clean look and I sprayed between I water sprayed between every single standing grit on this table I did 80 120 150 uh, 180 with a mesh sandpaper and finished off with 220 so I made a lot of beginner mistakes with this table and the biggest problem here on the whole project was using uh, general finishes armor seal satin um, after doing tons of research about what to finish this table with I ended up going with armor seal um, I think overall they make good products but for this table it was catastrophic uh, I'm gonna make a different video just specifically on this issue down the road but basically long story sh short is this satin finish is not meant for tables like this it, it's it was created because a professor, I believe like a woodworker um, in like a wood in a wood class, uh, basically wanted to create a finish that was uh, that could be applied in a dusty garage, which was my case. But the um, thing is it dries, it starts setting up immediately. And what I found out after doing this and uh, doing a couple coats on it, I, I, I had streaking issues um, on the top and the bottom and I was hoping that they would go away like coat after coat. Um, you sand it down lightly and then you apply the next coat. But the issue is here, um, and what I found out after tons of research that ton like, I saw tons of people having issues with using uh, the satin finish uh, armor seal on big um, projects with dark wood, which is exactly what this project was obviously. Um, you can't apply it fast enough. 
um, I don't know. It's, it's from what I could tell in all the comments I read online and the videos I watched, um, Armor Steel didn't really even have an answer for it. It was just kind of don't use this project on projects like the one you're watching now. So this became a huge issue. Um, I wasn't, I actually had to push back the, the date for my client because um, I was so upset about the finish that it had. So the finish that it gave. So you can see me, I'm, I'm still attempting to um, sand it down, see if some of those streak marks go away after a next coat. Uh, but that was, that was never the case. And, I, and after watching different YouTube videos, um, I was getting frustrated because I, what, what was happening for them wasn't happening for me. Um, they're having really nice finishes with this armor seal satin, but with this specific piece, it just it didn't work. And I, I definitely won't ever use it again on a, a big project like this. So now something quicker that's, I don't know, a, a quarter of the size that you can finish in a minute. Now that, that'd probably work, but I just couldn't get past the, the streaking marks coat after coat. So I uh, made made a hard decision, told the client I was going to push back the, the date for this table and uh, ended up using a, a stripper a chemical agent to basically take off all the um, take off all the armor seal finish that I had applied. Yeah, so basically my method for this armor seal, um, because I just wanted it to work so bad, I was so confused on it. Uh, I ended up trying three coats, and after the third coat, I was like, it's either going to dry streak-free, and it's going to be awesome, or it's just not going to work, and I'm going to have to start all over. So what I kept doing is uh, sanding, um, sanding it down, mineral spirits, all that stuff, and then apply the next coat, and it just it just never worked for me. All right, so I must not have videoed putting the uh, chemical stripper on here, but basically you just put it on, you wipe it all, all across the table, let it sit for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, and then scrape it all off. And it basically pulls the finish out of the table. Um, and it actually worked It worked well. I was, I was really worried. Obviously, I hadn't done that yet. What I'm doing here is just kind of sanding it down, seeing how it looks um, after um, all the abuse that this wood's been through at this point. So I did the bottom first, and then next was the top. Definitely mask up with this stuff if you do it because it's nasty. Nasty for your lungs and everything. So take safety precautions for sure here. All right, so I obviously, um, after that was all said and done, um, scraped off the, the old finish, I had to refinish the entire table. Go all the way up through all the steps again. Um, 80, 120, 150, 180, 220. And did that. Didn't want to show you guys again because you kind of already saw some of that process. Here's the new finish that I went with. Uh, it's Rubio Monocoat. Um, it's a hardwood floor finish. And it's become really popular with um, tables these days because it's, it's really durable. It's not as durable as like a polyurethane, which I was trying to get with the armor seal. Yeah, I was basically trying to get uh, an oil and uh, urethane finish with that armor seal. Uh, obviously didn't work out. But here, uh, this Rubio Monaco, it's really going to get that color pop. And it's it's still a durable finish. Um, I mean, people use it for hard, hardwood floors. And that, the hardwood floors go through tons of abuse, obviously. So, so yeah, this is the Rubio Monaco Pure. Um, they have tons of different colors. I've, I've actually recently purchased this smoke color for an ash and oak project I'm doing. I'm excited to kind of see how that looks. But, this, yeah, this is the Oil Plus 2C uh, with the accelerator. Uh, there's a ratio there that you add a little bit of the accelerator with uh, the oil plus. So after having all those issues with the armor seal, it was super nice just to pour this Rubio on there, spread it out with, uh, here I just uh, cut off a piece of cardboard, um, clean cardboard that I had and used that as my trowel because um, I didn't have one uh, around. So just use that, it actually worked out fine. But you can, you can simply just wipe it in. You can buff it in. Um, I mean, you really can't screw it up. Um, the one thing that you can screw up is just leaving on too much excess. So with the table this size, I think there always kind of is a, a, t a clock ticking when you're finishing it. And uh, so you don't want to, like, just really take your time here. You kind of want to um, spread it out as much as possible with the trowel and then wipe it in uh, really well. The most important thing when you're wiping it in is to use a lint-free cloth, uh, something that won't start breaking down on you. 
Um, I had a little bit of that issue, but switched cloths and it worked well. I basically, uh, as soon as I um, had it all spread across the table, I let it sit for a couple minutes and then I kept grabbing a new cloth and just really uh, wiped it in really well. Um, definitely it starts, I mean, it, it's a wa uh, wax based finish, so you got to really wipe it in. There's definitely some like resistance Im immediately when you let it sit there for a little bit. So wipe it in really well. Um, let it sit, keep wiping it out, um, keep wiping it down, making sure that there's no excess anywhere. So I did the bottom first and then I let it sit for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, let it tack up a little bit and then flipped it over uh, so that the table doesn't warp. If you just do one side, um, since it's absorbing that ruby oil on just the bottom, it can, it can definitely warp your table. So you want to um, definitely finish uh, both sides uh, in a pretty close time frame. Here I'm just uh, putting some paper towel down because those those pads were a little dusty. Almost got away from me there. Um, kept it. That would have been catastrophic. But uh, I hung on. I hung on. All right. Now I'm doing the same thing just to the top. Wiped it on. Uh, troweled it on. Then wiped it on. After that first coat, uh, I was super pleased. Uh, let it dry, and there were absolutely no streaks. Um, you couldn't have tell. You couldn't tell that um, I had taken off another finish. Uh, it just it looked it looked amazing. It was exactly what I was hoping for. Um, I ended up actually doing a second coat, but did the same thing. Started on the bottom, and I actually did let it um, dry for a couple hours after that, so there weren't marks on the bottom of the table after flipping it over wet. So did that, and then. I um, did the top again and let it dry and then uh, delivered to the client. He was super pleased. Uh, I gave him some Rubio Monaco maintenance oil as well that he uh, recently applied. That gives it some extra protection and a little more color pop. Now that we've reached the end of the video, I just want to say thank you if you've made it all the way to the end. You can definitely see that uh, I'm somewhat beginner woodworker. I'm still figuring it out. This was my first table uh, this size. I feel like I learned a lot in this process and, and ultimately that's what's gonna make me a better woodworker. So thanks for following along. Hopefully you've also learned a couple things throughout this video. Um, I try to really give a deep dive. A lot of YouTubers just kinda say the basic things and then you and I've had issues later on because uh, I, I wasn't expecting an issue. So hopefully I gave a little insight into um, any, any problems you maybe also come across. but. Um, definitely look, be on the lookout for more videos from me. All my products that I've, I use in this video will be linked down below. You can also follow me on Instagram at TDWoodCustoms. Thanks for watching, everybody.